When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. It's February, the month for lovers, Super Bowl parties, and the month when you realize you have only a few more weeks until you have to file your taxes. But don't let your W-2s and 1099s stare you down. We're talking taxes today and how to get you ready. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Gaines. It will expand your brain. Whatever you're saving up for, A CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC. If you're already thinking, taxes, I don't want to listen to an episode about that, hang with me, I promise you, we're going to expand your brain a little bit during this episode. And over the years, it's funny, I've got a lot of people that get the CFP, Certified Financial Planner designation, confused with being a CPA, a Certified Public Accountant, and I'm really quick to correct them. Oh no, I'm not a CPA, that is for sure. But Hiring one to do my taxes was probably the best decision I ever made more than 10 years ago, pretty much when I first went self-employed, started my own business. I hired a CPA and I really haven't looked back since. Yes, I do pay money every year to have my taxes done, but it just takes a lot of stress off my back and it's something that I just feel like it's money well spent. But To counter that, one of the questions I get asked the most is, of course, do I need an accountant or should I do my own taxes? And there isn't a black and white answer, but hopefully in this episode, we're going to guide you a little bit so that you can figure that out. And I think life gets so complicated and 
I'm just a big fan of having a money team in place to help you succeed over the years. So I was so pumped to chat with Diane Gardner, who owns Adept Business Services and is an enrolled agent and an accredited tax preparer. And I just asked her, hey, can you help us both get in shape for the upcoming tax season so we are more than super prepared? So Diane, I am excited to have you on the podcast talking about a subject that so many of us dread, but I just know we're going to have so much fun and hopefully change the 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 way people think about taxes before we're done with this episode. By the time we're done with this episode, Shannon, they're going to go, taxes are so cool and so much fun. I love it. I love it. That is our challenge. Well, I wanted to start out, you know, tax time obviously is fast approaching. What's one step that someone can take today to get prepared without feeling stressed? I would say the first and biggest step is to make sure that you've got all of your financial records in order. If you have a business, making sure that you're, that you're, QuickBooks account or whatever program you're using, you've got everything up to date. You've got the information into your account. And if they're doing it for you, don't get stuck in that trap of I'm, you know, six, eight, 10 months behind. And now it's tax time. What am I going to do? You know, start working on it now. Um, We really push our clients hard so that we don't allow them to get behind like that because it's stressful for you. It's stressful for us. It's stressful for everybody. And Tax season has enough stress in it. We don't need to add more by being unorganized. For sure, for sure. And speaking of prep, I was thinking about this as I wrote wrote the last question. Since we all do wait till the last minute, that's sort of, I think, just part of our human nature, mainly because we don't like dealing with tax time. But is there a way that we can approach tax prep throughout the year so that when tax time comes, we're more ready? Are there certain things we should be thinking about throughout the year or is just the last minute thing sort of inevitable for a lot of us? Well, for those who have positioned themselves with a good accountant, they're, they have been having their, their bookkeeping done every single month. Their payroll has been processed. Their retirement contributions have been happened because they've been mapped out ahead of time. So you've had this plan you've been following all year. And then now it's just those final last few little tiny pieces. And so when you're in that kind of a situation, it goes so much easier and things don't get forgotten where when you dump it all at the last minute, Sometimes you'll forget something. It's kind of like when you get ready to pack to go on a trip. (laughs) If you've got that suitcase out a few days in advance and you're throwing stuff in, you have a better chance of not getting somewhere and going, oh, I forgot my toothbrush or my deodorant or whatever, you know, something kind of important because you threw it all in the morning of and then you're running out the door. So same type of a concept for tax season. I can't say that's ever happened to me. <laughs> no, never, never. Right. <laughs> Almost every trip, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot whatever. And it's yeah. like one of the most crucial things I do every day. So I can totally appreciate the analogy. And, you know, there's been a lot of tax changes. And I think a lot of listeners don't know, well, what does this mean for me? Or or are there any changes I should be doing? And I know this is a real individual type question because it's going to differ for for each different person. But what can we expect this year with all the tax changes and how will those changes really impact our finances going forward? Will they or, or won't they? Well, for the most part, they will. And from the sampling that we did of our own clients last tax season, it appears that most people are going to come out on the good side of it. They're going to see a, re- a reduction in their tax and they're going to go, Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> there will be a few that will owe maybe a little bit more than what they voted in the past. But for the most part, this is a reduction in tax. So it's a good thing. And I can just run through some of the things to kind of be watching for if you'd like me to. Yeah, that would be amazing. Okay. Something that's going to affect everybody is we've lost our personal exemptions. So in the past, if you were married and had a couple kids, you were married and four or something like that on your tax return. Well, those personal exemptions are now gone. And they were a little over $4,000 a person as a deduction for us. 
But on the flip side of that, they've doubled the standard deduction. So for those who did not itemize in the past, a married person standard deduction was was $12,700 and now it's $24,000. So a single person was $6,000 something and now it's $12,000. So they've, they've upped those numbers, which in theory will help make up for the loss of the, the personal exemptions. And then good news for those who have kids that are under 17. In the past, we had $1,000 per child child tax credit. We now have a $2,000 per child child tax credit. So that's going to help those with, with you know, school-age type children. And then for those who have college-age kids or who are maybe supporting a parent or a sibling or something like that, we have a new family tax credit of $500 a person. So that's something brand new. And that will kind of help. It's not, I think I can help a lot, but I've got lots of clients who might have a couple kids off in college. They'll get that $500 credit. So those right. are just kind of generic type things that will affect most all of us are those kind of things. And in addition to that, they decreased the tax rates. So what used to be 39.6 is now 37%. And most of us were in maybe the 15% rate is now down to 12%. So each bracket has come down a couple percentage points and they've widened out those brackets. So you won't jump to the next bracket quite as quickly as you did before. That's so, great news for most yeah. people. Yeah. So those basic changes right there should lower the tax that's owed on most everybody's tax returns. We sampled about about 35 or 40 of our clients last tax season because we wanted to get my head wrapped around what's this going to do for next tax season. And all but two came out somewhere between maybe 600 to $2,000 ahead. So wow. I thought that was pretty nice. Just a nice little extra that we weren't expecting. Then on top of it, for those of us who are self-employed and who are operating in either as a Schedule C or maybe an S-Corp or a partnership where you have a K-1 that flows through to your personal return, we have another a new deduction over there called the Qualified Business Income Deduction. And it's a very complicated topic, so I'll keep it really super simple. In a very oversimplified explanation, we're going to take our net profit of our business and we're going to multiply it times 20% and get a new deduction on the personal tax return. So that means we have to really take a look at our use of depreciation because in the past, well, let's just write that vehicle off or that piece of equipment off. Let's just you know, write it off all in one year because we were trying to decrease the amount of profit, which decreased the amount of tax you owed. This year, we're going to want to run some numbers before we just blanket right off all this stuff to make sure that, you know, it's still going to work out to our benefit because a 20% deduction is a pretty big number for us. Yeah, that's super sizable. And I'm glad that you brought up self-employed. So many people are either self-employed, have their own business, or maybe they have a side hustle where they have some 1099 income. And there's always a lot of questions I get around deductions. And again, I know this is super specific to whatever individual there is, but generally speaking, you know, how can we figure out what deductions we can take and maybe what ones will raise an IRS red flag or, or things that we shouldn't be deducting? Is there a way to figure that out? Or is that something where we really should be working with an account or CPA to help us navigate that? Well, the, the best would be to work with your tax preparer, hopefully a licensed tax preparer, somebody who's an enrolled agent or a CPA, something along those lines. Um, but the IRS um, says that we can take any type of an expense that's ordinary and necessary for the operating of our business. So there's no one perfect list for that type of stuff. But in my book, Stop Overpaying Your Taxes, which is available out on Amazon, I devote one whole chapter in that book for different kinds of industries and just basic business deductions. And people always kind of go, wow, when they look at that, the long list that are in that particular chapter, because there's a lot of things in there you wouldn't necessarily realize could be deductible for your business if you're using it in the right way. So we always say right. that your business is a wonderful tax write-off for you if you're aware and you're, and you're knowledgeable about the types of things that you can write off. 
That's super cool. I love that. So tell me a little bit about about your background. Have you always been super excited about taxes or, or what is your journey into the tax world? Well, my journey into the tax world started in the auditing world way back when I was going to college. I went, took my first job in an accounting firm and didn't know, you know what I wanted to be when I grew up. So they had an <laughs> opening in the auditing department. And I spent about two years in the auditing department with the, this whole thing. God, get me out of here. This is not working. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when there was an opening, I was able to move over into the tax side of the business. I went, this is fun. <laughs> and so I've been a, a tax nerd ever since because on the tax side, I can sit down with you, Shanna, and we can take a look at your last couple of years tax returns. I can spot mistakes or missed opportunities, uh, then put together a plan for you and help you be able to take advantage of those mistakes or missed opportunities. And usually I can put anywhere kind of between about five and maybe $150,000 back in somebody's pocket just by doing some tax planning with them. I couldn't do that in the auditing world. So (laughs) tax was fun. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. 
After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I love when someone's super passionate about a subject that most of us, you know, would rather do any other chore than actually do. So I love that you can bring that that light to it. And I've had this question a lot. We we sort of touched on this a little bit earlier, but how do you know when it's the right time to hire a CPA or an accountant versus using software? You know, what's your two cents on that? Well, I... I'm going to be biased and I'm going to say anytime you have a legitimate business and you're wanting that business to grow and you're wanting to make some money from it, you're wanting to start scaling it, uh, that type of thing, you definitely want to get hooked up with a, if a, I'm going to call it an entrepreneurial accountant. And there's a huge group of accountants out there that would look at you and go, huh? So an entrepreneurial account is somebody who understands the entrepreneurial journey that you're on, gets it, who's going to be there right with you, tracking with you, helping you make some of those important decisions, giving you knowledge that they've picked up over the years. Um, It's not uncommon for me to start talking marketing with some of my clients because I'm a pretty good marketer. And just those kinds of things that your average accountant out there really doesn't do, doesn't offer that. They're really great at reporting the history. They'll get all the, we say the right numbers in the right boxes and they'll file it on time, but that's kind of where they stop. So you really want to find somebody who has that entrepreneurial mindset right along with you. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur my whole entire career and was so lucky to find an accountant who thinks like a business owner. And like you said, is involved with marketing ideas and and helping you actually grow your business, actually connects you with clients. And it just has a different feel to it when you know that you have somebody behind you helping you succeed versus what you just said, like just filling in the boxes because we could do that ourselves. Right. <laughs> so right. having somebody who's there, I think is just so incredibly valuable. It is. And that's probably the number one thing I hear as I talk to successful entrepreneurs all over the U.S. is that their current or soon to be prior accountant, you only ever heard from them at tax time when here come a couple forms in the mail. And that was it. They never heard from them the rest of the year. There was no information being exchanged. There was no educational opportunities. And they're kind of blown away when they find out all the stuff that we do in my office that makes us so different from that traditional average accountant. I love that. And do you work with with anybody? I mean, could somebody contact you if they're an entrepreneur and they're they're looking for something like that? Or are you uh, regionally specific? Well, I do work nationwide and the best fit for my business is businesses that are doing a minimum of about 250000 in sales um, on up. Um, I always like to say I love working with businesses that are paying enough tax that it really hurts. <laughs> that and I understand. <laughs> yeah, because those are the ones we can do something with. They're motivated. It's like, I do not want to pay that much tax again this year. And as you and I are talking, this is in January. Uh, We've got the whole year ahead of us. Let's get this plan laid out. Let's start working it for the year. And so at the end of the year, you look back and go, wow, that was cool. So those are the best ones that I like to work with, as opposed to maybe some of the smaller ones who really can't afford to jump in and say, yes, I want some coaching help and I want to be able to make a difference because they're really, they might only be paying a couple thousand dollars in tax. And yeah, that's painful to them but not as painful as somebody who's paying 30 or 40 or 50,000 in tax. For sure. Yes, I definitely understand that. And another question I wanted to ask you, I don't know how many scam calls I've received just last year, you know, claiming they were from the IRS. And I know this can be scary if you get one of these calls, yeah. even if you know it's a hoax. But what should you do if if you're the lucky recipient of, of some of these calls? Is there should you just ignore them or what's happening that this is this is on the rise? It's on the rise because we're easy targets, especially during tax season. You'll see it really, really prevalent out there. 
Um, in fact, last year during tax season, you know, I worked horrendous hours. So during tax <laughs> season, I came home late one night and my recorder at home was blinky because I still have a landline. And it, as I listened to the message and it was the proverbial, this is from the IRS. So we're going to come take you to jail and this whole thing. And I was all excited. Yes, I finally got one because I wanted <laughs> to hear what my clients were hearing because they call it a panic. So the first best thing you can do is just hang up. There's nothing that they, that is true. The IRS will never, ever, ever, ever call you out of the blue. The only time you would ever get a call from an IRS is if you're already working with an agent and you're working a particular payment plan or something along those lines, you might get a call that way, but you will never, ever get a phone call. You will never, ever, ever get an email because I got a very serious looking email from the IRS a couple days ago and I started laughing again. It's like, okay, here we go again. It's tax time. So don't ever click on any of the links. Don't give them any information. They're, they they just they do not do that. So we're so kind of nice would, the, they would send you a letter, right? If they wanted they to contact you. you, yeah. And we're, that's it. it's really nice that they're still very old school. That they will send you the letter, and then from there you go ahead and start working with them. But they'll never call you. They'll never email you right away. That's so great to know. And just speaking in general about tax fraud, because I know that some of the listeners last year had contacted me and they actually had been victims of tax fraud. Yes. Is there any way that we can prepare ourselves a little bit better so we're not a victim or what should we do if we are in that situation? Well, first, the best thing you can do according to the IRS is file early because that keeps the ability for someone else to file using your social security number um, minimalized because you've already filed. Then Got outside it. of that, if you are a victim of it, contact the IRS and they will issue you a PIN number, a P-I-N PIN number that then you will use to file your tax return from now to the end of your life. You will have a, They'll give you a new PIN every single year. So once you get into that system, then you need to watch for that PIN. And here again, they'll mail it to you. Very old school. They'll mail it to you. And that PIN number will go on your tax return to make sure that you cannot be a victim of identity fraud going forward as far as the IRS goes. But unfortunately, there's so many unscrupulous people out there that are reaping, you know, probably millions of dollars in these fictitious refunds by grabbing people's social security numbers and filing fictitious tax returns. So file early, and that's probably the best deterrent to it. And what can you do if you find out you are a victim? What what should your course of action be? Um, I'd contact the IRS. You can go out to irs.gov or go to your nearest local IRS office if you have one in your town and just let them know, hey, this is what's happened. Uh, this doesn't, something doesn't seem right on my account. Also, if you are one of those that get the printout from the Social Security Administration periodically, they mail those out, pay attention to them. Because if you see something on there that's like, this isn't normal, contact the IRS, go straight to them and, and let them know, get somebody working on the case because they have a whole team that's dedicated to just that type of stuff. And they take it pretty seriously. That's so great to know. So I'd love to know just in general, I thought this would be a fun question. Why do you think most of us dread or get totally stressed out when it comes to tax time? Like, is there something that's just sort of like built into us that when we think about taxes, we start to get all panicky? I think, Shannon, I think it's because people don't understand how the system works. And anytime you enter into something that you really don't understand, you only do it once a year. So you don't get good at it. We're like myself, we do it thousands of times a year. It's scary. You know, yes. so it's like myself, when I have a speaking engagement, I have to stand up in front of a room to talk. That's not something I do on a daily basis. I'll do it several times a year, but not on a daily basis. And so I get really nervous and my hands will shake and things like that sometimes. So it's that same type of thing for you guys with your taxes. You only do it once a year. You're not positive on what the rules are. You're not sure if you're doing everything right. And we have this kind of persona out there. The IRS is these big guys in dark suits and sunglasses <laughs> and they're coming after us, you know, kind of the godfather type thing. They're coming after you. And in reality, they're really not. It's, But it's just that unknown. It's the fear of the unknown. And then knowing that I'm going to have to pay some money. I don't know how much, but I'm going to have to pay money. But if you're working with a really good at entrepreneurial proactive accountant, you know how much you're going to pay before you ever hit the end of the year. And then it's not that so stressful. 
I like that. That's great. Well, Diane, this has been amazing. If you could leave the listeners with one tip or one suggestion going into tax time, what would that be? Don't procrastinate. That's because a good one. Whatever, yeah, whatever tax preparer you're working with or accountant that you're working with, the further you go into tax season, the more sleep deprived they are. <laughs> and you want the best brain power. You want to get in early and get into their system, you know, in early in February or maybe by the middle of February or something because they're not sleep deprived yet. But those tax returns that show up around the end of March, um, early April, from the inside looking out, you look at those and go, oh, no, I can't do it. I don't know if I can even crawl over the finish line let alone, you know, have a coherent conversation with you. So don't procrastinate, get it in early, have it in it, you know, in a complete format, organized, neat type format, and your accountant will love you a lot better for that. I love that. That's so fantastic. So Diane, tell the listeners where they can find you and where they can find out more about potentially working with you. All righty. We actually have a free gift that we're giving away. So I'll give you a little special little site to go to. Um, it is www.taxcoachforyou.com. And that's taxcoach, the number four, you.com forward slash millennial money. And when you go there, we have a special report called Congress Cut Taxes. And it talks about 16 different areas in the tax law that could potentially affect you or your business. And it's just our little special gift is we're trying to help people understand this new tax law and make it not quite so scary. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.